Good morning again, guys. Uh, again, my name is Eric. Uh, welcome for all you who uh, are, are joining us on your couches at home um, and just uh, from wherever you are, we just want to welcome you. Um, before I get into the text, uh, let's pray. God, grateful for your consistent love, your patience, your care for us. God, uh, these are very strange and uh, difficult or different days uh, that we're living in. Um, but you have called us as believers to continue to be your servants, to be uh, your priesthood, your, uh, your people. And I pray that in the midst of uh, political unrest and um, a pandemic um, and many other things that are going on in our world, I pray that we can be your people. I ask that today that uh, our hearts would be open to receive your word. God, I am confident that there is a word for your people. There's a word for me. And I just pray uh, for, uh, for all of us right now that we would just, we would surrender to that. Surrender to what you may want to tell us, what you want to teach us today, this morning. God, uh, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, we're going to continue our study in Malachi. Um, Pastor Canaan uh, taught from Malachi chapter 1, and he did uh, verses uh, 6 through 14. And today I will continue on um, our study in Malachi, which is called uh, True Worship. True Worship. And uh, we're going to study today from chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. And let's just read through it, and then let's take some time uh, to see what God would have us to know. It says, therefore, again, Malachi chapter 2, 1 through 9. It says, therefore, the decree is for you, priest. If you don't listen and if you don't take it to heart to honor my name, says the Lord of armies, I will send a curse among you and I will curse your blessings. In fact, I have already begun to curse them because you are not taking it to heart. Look, I am going to rebuke your descendants and I will spread animal waste over your faces, the waste from your festival sacrifices, and you will be taken away with it. Then you will know that I sent you this decree so that my covenant with Levi may continue, says the Lord of armies. My covenant with him was one of life and peace. And I gave these to him. It called for reverence and he revered me and stood in awe of my name. True instruction was in his mouth and nothing wrong was found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and in integrity and turned many from iniquity. For the lips of a priest should guard knowledge and people should desire instruction from his mouth because he is the messenger of the Lord of armies. You, on the other hand, have turned from the way you have caused many to stumble by your instruction. You have violated the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of armies. So I, in turn, have made you despise and humiliated before all the people because you are not keeping my ways, but are showing partiality in your instruction. Last week, uh, Canaan talked about the state of, of these people. They had been given, they had been bringing animal sacrifices to the temple, to the priests. And God is speaking directly to the priests here, and he's saying the animal sacrifices that you have allowed these people to bring are defiled. They're, they're, they're bringing blind and lame animals, animals that 
are, are not worthy of, of honoring the God of the universe. But the priests are allowing this. And so out of all the people in all the nation, he is specifically talking about the priests. So the messengers, the messengers are God, uh, of God are his main focus in this text. So even though there is not a, on this side uh, of the New Testament, there's no, no actual priesthood on this side other than the priesthood of, of Jesus, where he sits as our mediator for, forever. But we see here there is a, a priesthood here in the Old Testament that people would go to. They would go to to sacrifice animals for, for their sins, and, and, and they would bring uh, uh, food portions, their first fruits to them. And these people have become super casual about sacrificing and honoring God. That it, it had become an obligation to go and sacrifice to God. It, it was a necessary evil of, of life. It was something they had to do. And they were maybe doing it because they didn't want bad luck. But what was not there, what Pastor Canaan talked about last week, was respect for his name, respect for his name. And he picks that same theme up in chapter two. In verse one, it says, therefore the decree is for you priests. Again, he's talking to the priest. Verse two, it says, if you don't listen, okay? If you don't listen, and if you don't take it to heart to honor my name, says the Lord. So let's talk about a few things that they were not doing that was gonna cause curses to come down on them where God was not going to um, bless them. It says they weren't listening. They, work, or they weren't taking honor to heart. They, did, they, didn't, they didn't reverence God. They didn't see to it that these people first obligation was to revere his name, to know him, to honor his name. And so because of this, it says in verse two, it says, I will send a curse among you and I will curse your blessings. I will curse those things that you thought were more important to me. I will use those very things to curse you. I will show you how much I need to be honored by cursing the things that you, you say need to be honored. You say these things make me happy. These things fulfill me. I will curse those very things. For us, that may be, uh, you know, we thought getting our new house was going to satisfy us. We thought marriage. We thought, man, when I finally get married, I, I will finally be satisfied. I will take those very things that you dishonored me with and showed honor to because you thought that's where your fulfillment. I will use those very things to curse you. He goes on. He said, in fact, I have already begun to curse you. I have cur cursed them because you are not taking it to heart. Again, he says it again. Taking what to heart? My honor. You're not taking my honor to heart. And the priest were allowing these sacrifices. They were, they, their first responsibility was to show people the greatness of who God is. And they were more worried about honoring the people that were coming, not offending them. If you look over to verse 8 and 9, it, 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 it further explains how they dishonored them. You, on the other hand, it says, have turned, this is verse 8, you, on the other hand, have turned from the way. You have caused many to stumble by your instruction. Okay? It's a reason their instruction is off. You have violated the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of armies. And we'll find out what that covenant is here in a second. 
verse 9, it says, So I in turn have made you despised and humiliated before all the people because you are not keeping my ways, but showing partiality in your instruction. So they're showing partiality in their instruction. These, so their priests are, are not taking my honor, my name, not revering my name. So that, that's one problem. And they're showing partiality when they do give instruction. They're showing partiality because they don't want uh, to offend those who, who are providing finances for them or, or um, uh, things for them that they need to live on. So they're showing partiality. They don't want to offend these people. They bring a, a blind or a dead animal to, to sacrifice I instead of rebuking them or, 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 or redirecting them to say no. This is not to be at this temple. No, they don't want to offend them because they know that's where their money comes from. That's where they know their, their finances and their resources come from. So they don't, they show partiality in their teaching, in their teaching. Guys, this is what happens when, when we begin to put more value in the, the blessings, in, in the things that God has given us than God himself. So let's look at this covenant with Levi. Let's look at this covenant with Levi. In Deuteronomy 18, I'll just read it, and you don't have to go there. It says, the Levitical priest, the whole tribe of Levi, shall not have a portion or inheritance with Israel. They shall eat the Lord's offering by fire and his property. They shall not have an inheritance among their countrymen. And here's the part. It says the Lord is their inheritance. The Lord is their portion as, I, as he promised them. Guys, they were not satisfied with the Lord. They weren't satisfied with the Lord being their portion. Let's go back to uh, verse 3. And so because of this, this is what he's doing. He says, look, I am going to rebuke your descendants and I will spread animal waste over your faces, the waste from your festival sacrifices, and you will be taken away with it. It seems like a maybe a temple tantrum from our God. But this is not no out of control temple tantrum. This is God strategically cursing the people, strategically showing them what they're doing wrong. He's taking the very thing that they're dishonoring him with and he's spreading it over their faces. Guys, this is calculated by God. This is wise, and, and, and this is a good way for God to, to judge the people out of in mercy. Because there, there, will be, there will be never be a time when they will forget what that judgment felt like and smelt like. They will know, they will always remember what it is to dishonor God. So this is a, this is a great mercy of God. This is not God um, going crazy and, 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 and throwing a tantrum and, and just doing whatever. No, he's strategically, mercifully loving his people, rebuking them so they would see the dishonor and know without a doubt, this is how you have dishonored me. You have brought animal waste and you've defiled what is supposed to be holy. You've defiled what is supposed to be beautiful. You've defiled what, what, what should honor me and glorify who I am and show the greatness of who I am. You defile that. It says, 
Let's go back to verse three again. Look, I am going to rebuke you in your descendants. I will spread animal waste over your face, faces, the waste from your festival sacrifices, and you will be taken away with it. Verse four, then you will know that I sent you this decree. So here's another mercy. So why has he rebuked him? Why has he spread animal waste on their faces? Why has he cursed their blessings? Verse four says why. Then you will know that I sent you this degree. This is so they, they know who sent this, who sent this rebuke. His desire is for them to repent, to know him. So he's not going to give a, a, a rebuke that doesn't make any sense. He's going to do something that draws them back and causes them to repent. So that my covenant with Levi may continue, says the Lord of armies. Verse five tells us about this covenant. It says my covenant with him was one of life and peace, life and peace. What is life and peace? Isn't this something that we would love? A, a, a covenant with God of life and peace. This is the covenant that he gives us also, one of life, of, of, of fulfillment. He says, I will give you life and I will give it to the full, he says. The Bible tells us that we are made complete in him. He promises Levi this. He says, I will give you one of life and peace. Is this a vacation on the island or a good book on the beach? Is that life and peace? Is this no wars, no struggles, no bad circumstances, super obedient kids? Is that what life and peace is about? a husband or, or a wife that does what we tell them to do and, and we don't argue or whatever. Is that a life? Is that life and peace? Is that what he's talking about? What do we, what do we connect life and peace with? Here is shalom. You've heard that word. It means wholeness, wellness, completeness. It's not just a portion of peace here, but it's completeness. And it only God provides that. And this, this wholeness, and this peace, he, he promises to the Levites. What's the other part of that covenant? Verse 5 says, and I gave this to him. What I wanted them to do is to revere it, it's, I call for reverence, and he revered me and stood in awe of my name. As their instruction, the Levites' instruction, was to revere him, was to honor him, was to stand in awe of his name, to take time to know him. If we, if I, as a pastor, want to be a messenger to the people, to messenger to my family, to my friends, to the, to the people that I connect with, if I want to be a messenger, I need to revere his name. If you want to pray anything for your pastors, pray that we would revere his holy name. That's the type of pastors you want. You don't necessarily need uh, uh, a scholar up here preaching. You want someone to be hearing from God himself. You want a person, you want a man of God whose heart burdens for the glory of God. You want everything about him, not just his words, what he preaches, what he talks about, but his life to point to God. That's, that's your desire. That should be your desire. It's to hear from him. It's to pray for your pastors. That they would revere his name. Why? 
Why? Let's read verse 6. Let me tell you why you want this. Because true instruction was in his mouth and nothing wrong was found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and in integrity and turned many from iniquity. What's the outcome of standing in awe of him? What is the outcome of, of, of one of your pastors knowing him? True instruction. True instruction. One that not just comes from his lips, from his, from his mind, from knowing something, but experiencing God himself. You want instruction that comes from uh, the priest's lips, the pastor's lips. Oh, you want this type of instruction to come because of God doing something in his or her heart. True instruction when his, was in his mouth and nothing wrong was found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and integrity and turned many from iniquity. Turn many from iniquity. Isn't this what we want? We don't want people to continue to bring um, defile sacrifices to God. We want to see people repent. We want to, to, to see people turn from their iniquity and turn to Jesus to know him, to serve him, to revere him with their life. Let it be, let it be my ambition, let it, let it be my heart's passion, let it be your heart's passion for the people to revere his name, to know him, to want to honor him with their lives and with their sacrifices and what they give. Verse 7 says, for the lips of the priest should guard knowledge and people should desire instruction from his mouth because he is the messenger of the Lord of armies. Proverbs 9, 6 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fear, not I'm scared fear, but reverent fear. This is where knowledge begins. This is where wisdom begins. For those who want to seek instruction, seek instruction for those who fear him. Not those, not just those who've read a lot of books. Seek instruction from those who know him personally, who fears his name, who, who reveres God, who trembles who trembles at his presence, who trembles at his word, who opens his word and, and finds them in awe of who God is. This is the type of instruction. These are the instructions that I want. This is the type of instruction that you should want. For the lips of the priest, the lips of the messenger, should guard knowledge, should guard knowledge. And people should desire instruction from his mouth because he is the messenger of the Lord of warmings. Guys, if we are going to be people who honor him, who, who don't find ourselves drifting into this type of lifestyle where they're bringing defiled animals we must take our time and sit in his presence and know who he is. Know who he is. Who is he? He is the one who created something out of nothing. He is the one that continues to put life and breath in my lungs. He is the one that sustained every beat of my heart and your heart. Is he worthy of this honor? Is he worthy of this reverence? Yes, he is. He is worthy of this. 
I have reason. We have reason to worship him. Exodus 33, I'll read you a story where Moses understood, understood what we talked about earlier of what, what life and peace was. He understood this. Exodus 33, Moses said to the, to the Lord, you have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I will know you by name and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. Here's, here's God's reply. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. What is this life and peace? It's not a, even though it sounds good, it's not a beautiful steak and a glass of wine. That, that seems like a, a moment of peace, but this is peace. When you see the glory of God, verse 18, it says, then Moses says, now show me your glory. The Levites covenant the promise to them that you that I will be your portion. God says, I will be your portion. And they weren't satisfied with God. Moses is satisfied. Moses says, now show me your glory. If you go with me, I am good. If you go with me, I am good. How do we walk in a life, uh, walk in life and wholeness and peace? We revere his name. We seek his we seek his face. We want to be, uh, we want to stand in awe of who he is. What comes out of this person? What comes out of a person that stands in awe of him? True instruction, knowledge. One who, who, who directs people away from iniquity into the presence of God. Guys, can you believe that if, 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 if God has sent Jesus to be our priest, our faithful priest, he stands, the Hebrews tells us that he stands continually as our intercessor. The one who, who not only stands as our intercessor, but he is the one who gave his body his life for us, a perfect sacrifice, a perfect sacrifice that we would be called his own. He atoned for our sins. And then in Peter, 1 Peter 2, 9 says this about us, men and women. On this side of the New Testament, on, on, in this side, he says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood. We are God's messengers. If we're going to be God's messengers, if we're not going to be led astray and defiled and, and, and teach with partiality, if we're not going to people who dishonor him, we're going to have to revere him. We, if we're going to be priests that he doesn't curse with what we think are blessings, we're going to have to walk with him. We're going to have to know him and stand in awe of him. He says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. How shall we do this? We shall do this with reverent fear of God. We shall honor his name, not just in word, but in deed. In what we bring to offer. What we bring to offer will be our best. 
what we allow in our temple will be the best because we protect knowledge, we guard knowledge, as the scripture says. We'll give true instruction, we'll be on our lips, not because of how smart you are or I am, but because you spent time with him in his presence, standing in awe of him. You waited for him and he came to you. You, like Moses, asked to see his glory and he showed it to you. So when there is defilement in yourself, you hate it because you know who God is. You know his holiness and you know how great of a God he is and your ambition, your heart's ambition, right? Because the other priests, they weren't, they weren't taking it to heart. Your heart's ambition is to honor God. You will guard knowledge and people will desire instruction from your mouth because you are a messenger of God's grace. Let's pray. God, thank you. Thank you that you call us your own. We are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. May we walk as, as the descendants of Levi in peace and in integrity. And may we turn many from iniquity. May we be, we, may we be your people. May we trust your presence May we trust the knowledge you give us in those quiet moments more than the knowledge that anything this world can give us. May we be satisfied with you, you being our portion, you being our inheritance. God, may it never be that you take those things that, that we call blessings May it never be. Did you think those things that we call blessings, you begin to curse? But may we honor you and revere you. Forgive us for where we have failed you, where we, where we have brought defiled sacrifices. We have, we have brought not our best, but we have defiled your altar. God, help us. Help us to be your priest. Help us to be your messengers to a world that needs Jesus, a world that needs forgiveness, a world that needs love right now. God, may, may we be those people, God. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.